I'm back to teach you a unique roll. I call this roll the vertical back neck roll and it's one of my absolute favorites to teach. I think that this roll could be appropriate for just about any level of twirler as long as you put some practice into it. I'm excited to break it down for you. So let's get rolling. with any other roll tutorial, I'm going to start with what we're doing with our feet. The footwork is going to be a vital part of this roll, so make sure that you take the time to learn this and break this down. I'm going to start by facing the side, and I'm going to step left directly in front of my hips. Right, I'm going to shift my weight onto that right foot, pivot to face the opposite side, and then turn and step left to finish this out. So again, that's three steps and a turn. So we go one, two, turn, step left. Now let's throw our baton into the mix. I'm going to start by holding my baton on the very end, all the way on the rubber tip. Make sure you're not holding it at all on the metal part because that's going to disrupt the amount of baton that we have rolling over our shoulder. So make sure you start all the way down on the rubber part. And what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter which side either, the big or the little end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my baton down by my feet, swing it backwards, and give it a little loop outside at the top. This is going to give us a little bit of momentum to get us going into this roll. After we complete this little loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the baton down. I'm going to face you to show this. I'm going to bring it down by my left hip and bring it underneath my left arm. As I do this, my head is going to tilt down to my left shoulder, but I'm going to make sure that I'm not leaning forward at all. Your head should never be down. Your chin should stay up, but tilted to the side throughout the entirety of this roll. So make sure that you're never leaning forward because that's going to throw a baton right onto the floor and defeat the whole purpose. So make sure those shoulders are back, our head is tilted to the side, the baton swings down by our left hip and underneath this left arm. What I'm going to do now is with my thumb, I'm going to touch my thumb to the bottom part of this shoulder blade on the left side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it right up to my right shoulder. Now, since my head is out of the way, it should roll in a straight line. Take some time right now to stop and practice just that part of the roll. What we're going to do is we're going to go loop, roll, catch. Try to catch that five times in a row before you move on to the next step. Now that we've got that first step mastered, let's add in some footwork. If you've ever watched my horizontal back neck roll video, you'll probably recognize some of this advice. But when the baton is on the left side of your body, you're going to coordinate it with a left step with your foot. And of course, when it's on the right side, you're going to coordinate it with the right step. So already in this part of the roll, just in part one, we've accomplished two steps out of our three steps total. So what we're going to do is as we're looping, we're going to stay put. As it comes over on our left side, we're going to step left. And as it comes up onto the right, we meet that by stepping right. So all together, it looks like this. Loop, left, right, side, loop, left, right. That timing is going to be crucial for you add in the spin that happens with the next part. As I mentioned when we talked about the footwork, this next step is going to involve the rotation on the right foot. So after we've accomplished this left, right step, the baton is rotating this way, right? So we're gonna rotate with it. So as the baton swings down, I'm gonna shift my weight onto that right foot. It's gonna swing down toward my chest, and in order to avoid it, in order for it to not hit me and fall off, I'm going to rotate to keep it flowing. So it's going to go down in front of my body as I rotate and come up on this side. Now from here, the baton's going to continue this direction. It's gonna swing up, and our first goal is to catch it left. But I have a little bit of a training wheels practice for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to go loop, lift, catch. Keep the baton moving by holding it with this left arm, up and over to here. So again, if I face this way, I'm a little bit closer so that you can see this nice and detailed. I'm gonna go loop, catch. Always remember that this baton's gonna swing in front, and roll up the back. It's gonna come down. I'm gonna hold on to it with my left hand to train myself how to do this. It's gonna swing down in front of my chest. Come up, straight down, straight up and down in line with my spine. And I'm gonna catch it blind as our initial catch here. So all together, if you try that without the training wheels, it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna go loop, left, right, left. Catching right there, snug on my shoulder for a blind catch. As the baton comes around, 
You're going to step on that right foot as it's on your right shoulder. You're going to rotate as the baton is rotating. So our footwork is still going to match our baton work. So we're going left, right. The baton rotates. We rotate on the right shoulder and right foot. As we come up and before it hits your left shoulder, that's when you're going to open up and step left. That's where that third and final step comes in that coordinates with the side of the body that the baton is on. So we go left, right, turn left. Right here to the side, and we're going to finish with our weight over that left foot. All right, before adding in our step three, we're going to stop and do a little bit of a drill to warm up our open arm roll. So, in order to get this to roll right into this open arm, we're going to start by warming up our open arm roll, start in the right hand, open the left arm, palm up always, nice soft natural bend in the left elbow, we roll it down and catch, and then we can start from under our right shoulder here, give it a little push, squeeze your shoulder blades nice and tight back together, just like they will be when you're doing this nice roll here, squeeze that left arm back, and it'll roll down right into your hand. Now, if I put these two rolls together, starting from here, going to the blind, and then adding in this layout like this, just like I showed you at the beginning of the video. This is the ultimate goal here, is to get into here. But of course, stopping here at the blind is totally fine based on your skill level as well. A common issue that I see in many of my athletes is that they forget to add in the footwork. They're so focused on what the baton is doing that they just automatically forget that our feet are supposed to move, be moving along with it. But unfortunately, that causes more issues than anything because you have to rotate with the baton on this trick in order to get it to roll. So if we're standing still, the baton's just gonna hit our chest and roll off, or you're going to spin ahead of the baton and it's going to miss your shoulder entirely. So make sure that you hit each checkpoint where it goes under your arm with the left foot, on top of your right shoulder with the right foot, and you wait for the baton to rotate. A nice trick that I have in my little bag of tricks for this trick is to close your eyes and try it. I know that seems a little crazy, it seems a little bit scary, but I promise you, by closing your eyes, you can really feel the baton. That sense is heightened because we're no longer using our eyes. Although our brain knows what's supposed to happen next, we kind of tend to anticipate it. So by taking away our vision for this trick, we learn to really feel how the weight of the baton is moving and when to move a little bit more in coordination with the baton. Another common issue that I see in many of my students when they're attempting this roll is that they try to release the baton too high up underneath their underarm. And what this means is that instead of releasing down here by the bottom of your shoulder blade, they have it all the way up here. And when the baton comes forward, they have too much baton here in the front. What that does is when it's heavy here in the front part of you, it's gonna rock down, which is just what we want. But then when it's time for the baton to rock back up into the second part of the roll, it's too heavy and it's not gonna wanna rock up. So that sweet spot that's gonna allow just enough baton in the front to rock down, but also lift up, is by starting right here at the bottom of our shoulder blade. Now, if you lean forward at all on this particular beginning of the roll, that's where you're gonna have actually too much baton behind you because the baton has to cover more surface area to get up to your shoulder than if you're pulled up nice and tall where it can roll straight up. Now, if you're too far forward, the baton's gonna be too heavy baton behind you and it's not gonna wanna rock down. That's going to thus it finish the roll too early. So be really careful where you release this baton at. It should be just in line with the bottom of your shoulder blade for optimal rolling. Now, I have a little bit of a bonus tip to add on for you all. If you got this trick and you feel like it's fairly easy and you want to use it as a roll entrance, I have a new roll to add on to the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to go here and as it's rolling down your arm, as soon as it hits your bicep, a little bit further down from your shoulder, you're going to lift your arm up by your ear. The baton's going to continue rotating. You're going to turn your body into it and capture it into a roll. Of course, you can also go into Fujimi rolls here. Let me just show you what that looks like. So they go roll, lift. This 
roll is truly one of my all-time favorite rolls and I'm really looking forward to you guys trying it out whether it's in practice or out on the competition floor. With a little bit of work behind this, I know you can do it. If you have any questions, comments, or requests for future videos, be sure to drop those down in the comments and while you're there, like and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, work hard and be bold.